Hello everyone, this is Almir, Victor Echo 3, Delta Alpha Lima. Uh, over here today we have all the 3D parts that I printed uh, for my latest project, uh, the two element uh, beam antenna. Uh, over here we have the uh, V configuration the hubs. Uh, this one here is uh, the reflector and the driven element. And this week I completed the horizontal configuration hubs. Um, so we have the driven element and the reflector. And uh, over here it was the very first hub that I printed. Uh, this one here is for the, M for the MFJ uh, telescope whips. And, but since after uh, I bought all the four uh, elements uh, from Ali uh, Express uh, from China, so I want to have all the four elements uh, exactly the same, and um, so that's why I'm not using that one at the moment. But uh, so this is the MFJ uh, telescope whip. As you can see, it's uh, it's a lot bigger than the uh, the AliExpress one, and and also is much heavier. Uh, so I don't I'm not sure if that would work uh, in this project, but uh, it's a great uh, telescope whip, but uh, Much better actually than the, uh, the the one from China as you can see here when I mentioned my last video It's uh, the base of the telescope whip is nice and strong There's that one piece here one socket piece here that includes the treads and everything so it makes really strong the Aliexpress from China it's a uh, it's uh it's not that great but uh anyways uh we'll make it work and uh, as you can see the uh between the the two of them as the mfj i could like flush the telescope work right from the start here that wouldn't be a problem but the the aliexpress one i printed as you can see i printed it slightly longer so uh the whip stick it goes right inside here and we'll hold about this much and we'll give support for the base and then he grabs the the coupling uh, uh the coupling nut which goes insert like from here like that from the bottom and it has the hex uh, shape of the uh the coupling nut so it goes at one point here and it and it, and it doesn't go up or either the the element when you put in here it, like it doesn't go down because it has the round shape and in, at the bottom here it has the hex hex uh, shape of the uh, coupling nut so as you can see there is quite a few parts in here uh, if I were to buy or either find a material to do this complete this project I probably would take a lot longer and cost a lot more money uh, down here is the the bone, the two pieces, uh, it's about three feet long. Uh, in the middle, uh, in the center, for the, the mast, now I printed a, uh, a this other piece in here, which um, will hold in place the the, the boom. It's not going to rotate. Before I was using this piece here, it was a PVC pipe. Since the PVC was around, the boom would rotate a little bit inside so that was uh, that's another uh, great thing that I came up with so it's not going to uh, rotate it anymore and over here uh, this is where the the boom uh, is split and then the other piece uh, it joins them uh, I don't know there's too much space in here um, it joins them anyways uh, the other piece and so I printed this um, coupling uh, 3d printed for the uh, goes inside of the uh, the boom and it fits quite nice and tight in there and then this I secure with a little screw in here uh, over here we have the uh, for example for the uh, horizontal configuration uh, most likely I will need a guidelines to support the uh, the elements so I printed this little clamp in here which has a little uh, a hole here on the top that I can put a insert like a wood uh, 
piece of a stick like that and we'll hold like the, the element like from one side and then the other side over there and also that goes in the in the boom just like that so that's another piece that I come up with the, lately and um, so as you can see there is quite a few parts and uh, it's uh, that's the uh, the importance to have a if you are a, a homebrew uh, antenna builder like myself uh, you would consider to get a 3d printer because that's gonna help you uh, quite a bit and save a lot of time and money so uh, the the weather here this week has been pretty brutal like this week uh, the Arctic uh, vortex it came back on the east part of Canada so this week uh, the temperature was like between minus 15 and minus 20 with the wind chill would be like minus 27 minus 30 so it's almost impossible to do anything out there uh, but for sure tomorrow I will be uh, looking to test the horizontal configuration uh, since the weather is going to be a little warmer is going to, I think it will be like uh, between minus five or so so I will have the chance to uh, test the uh, horizontal configuration uh, plus here in my basement the, the uh, it's quite uh, large and uh, I am able to actually to uh, set up the uh, horizontal configuration which I will show you at the end of this video and uh, with the, the, the V configuration I was not able because the elements would touch the uh, the ceiling all right, so here we are with the uh, horizontal uh, configuration. Um, actually, with this type of uh, telescope, it whips it sags quite a bit. Um, I don't know if you can see, but uh, uh, right here, and it sags quite a bit. This is the 10 meter for the 10 meter band. And uh, so this is also when I said definitely it needs a, a guidelines. Uh, uh, to support the uh, the element and uh, the problem that's the problem with this type of uh, uh, whip sticks uh, telescopic whip sticks and it sags quite a bit and if you uh, use like this if you operate it like this for too long and uh, it apparently it takes the shape of the sag after a while the antenna even if you uh, put it vertical and then it will sag like sort of a sideways so that's why uh, I set up uh, without the guidelines here. I, I did not even put the little guy uh, that I print, which is uh, this little thing here. Would it go uh, insert like this in here and then with the, uh, the, the wood stick on top of it here. I didn't set up like that just for now, uh, but definitely uh, when I go on the field, I will have to set up even for the uh, 10 meters band um, with the uh, the uh, fishing poles uh, it was actually pretty uh, straightforward it was uh, only for the 15 meters I would need the guideline but for this setup with this telescope uh, whips I definitely need for basically all the bands 10 12 15 17 20 uh, so hopefully uh, uh, I can get out there uh, tomorrow morning and do some uh, operation uh, with this uh, horizontal configuration because I'm kind of curious uh, to see what the difference between the V configuration and the horizontal. I prefer the V configuration because then again I don't have to deal with the gu uh, guidelines. Uh, but uh, we'll see. I actually uh, took some uh, SWR reading here in my basement and uh, just to see where I am at and I'll show you. Uh, so here you are, uh, as you can see this, I believe it is dipping here, the short one here. I think it's because of the stuff that I have in my basement here. I have a uh, uh, metal shelves and I also have uh, quite a few LED cubes that I made. So I think it's interacting with those uh, stuff. So that's why there's two uh, dips in here. But uh, this is, I think this is the actual dip. Uh, where is the, the resonate? Uh, it sort of gives us the idea where it's at. I believe there is obviously there is the ground effect in here, and if I take it outside, probably this dip here will move like all the way down here. So, 
All right, guys, uh, this is going to be a short video, and uh, hopefully I can get out there tomorrow morning and, uh, and do some uh, uh, testing on, uh, with this antenna. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, 73.